Welcome back everyone to another exciting episode of Kaiju VFX. Today we are going to create Godzilla's Spiral Ray as requested by G&G fan. So before we get started, uh, let's take a look at what the final product will look like. So as always, I've got our footage uh, keyed out and ready to go right here. We've got our color grade layer, we've got Godzilla base and uh, our sky background. So just to get started, we'll disable the color grade just so we don't have to deal with uh, some odd looking colors. And so we have our stop motion here of Godzilla unleashing his spiral ray. So first we're going to create a new black solid. We'll hit control Y and we'll call this ray. And I'll make that the right size for our composition. Okay, here we go. So now we're gonna add a plugin from Video Copilot, uh, Saber. And all the plugins that I use, which this one is free, are in the description down below if you want to try them out for yourself. So, first things first, we're going to change the blending mode of this layer from normal to screen. And let's go to where Godzilla first starts to fire the beam. So, we'll just go to that final frame right there. And we'll drag this layer back there. And we'll position the end of the laser core and the start at Godzilla's mouth, get that positioned how we like. It will increase the size quite a bit. Something like this for now will work. And we'll make this sort of a reddish orange color to match Godzilla's spiral ray. And uh, I'm not going to go entirely through the process of creating the uh, main part of the beam because this tutorial will focus on the spiral aspect of the beam because that's what you all want to see how it's made. So if you want to see how to create the general shape of Godzilla's atomic breath, uh, please refer to the last Kaiju VFX tutorial where we covered uh, Godzilla Millennium's atomic breath, and that all can be applied to this uh, creating the beam. Obviously, I'll have some different distortion settings involved, as well as a different color, and you're free to play around with that however you like, but I'll just speed through this real quick. Alright, so I'm feeling satisfied with this basic beam that we have going on right now. We have uh, the extra little, almost ember-like particles flying out of the side, as you can see uh, right there. Uh, we have our beam right here with uh, some distortion on it, as well as a turbulent displace to make it a little bit more wavy and animated, as you can see there. So next, what we're going to work on is obviously the spiral part of the ray. And to do this, we are going to create a new composition. We'll just call this spiral, and we'll unlock the aspect ratio for this comp, and we'll keep the width at 1920 for now, but the height, we'll just multiply that by 5. So now we have this super long and tall composition. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to add a new solid, but we're going to keep this solid 1920 by 1080 just for rendering sake. And we're going to add an advanced lightning effect to this. So as you can see, we've got our basic lightning effect here. We can change it from direction to strike, which is what we want. Glow options, we will turn the glow opacity down to zero because we don't want that nasty, ugly glow that the advanced lightning effect comes predated with. Uh, so let's tinker a little bit more with this lightning beam effect. We'll turn up our aspect ratio so we can see what we're doing. We're going to the core settings. Uh, we'll bring up the core radius to maybe 7, it looks good. We'll bring up the opacity to 100. We will go into the turbulence here, turn that down a tad. We'll also bring down the forking to just 38, looks fine for now. Uh, decay, we can just leave that about there. Alright, that's looking okay. So. Well, actually, maybe we'll bring down the turbulence a little bit more. That looks better. So we'll bring this down to the very bottom of uh, our composition here. Just somewhere around the bottom. And we will move the endpoints of this lightning to sort of this general diagonal position. And actually, what we want to do is uh, have the endpoint in the Y come up 
to where the uh, anchor point for uh, the top right corner of the composition is. So we'll just move that right on top of there. And we want to do that for the bottom one as well. So we'll just bring that right about there. That all looks good. So we'll duplicate this layer and uh, we will uh, check out the position of this first one here. And we will check out that Y position and we will essentially move this lightning up and we'll play around with the conductivity state so it looks a little different and uh, you might be seeing the gist of what we're doing here so we're gonna do that a couple more times and just uh, move the lightning to start at the top of every other bolt and we'll change the conductivity state on all these maybe we'll bring up the uh, decay on a couple of these just a little bit and we can even play around with the type maybe make them two-way that looks decent so yeah I'll just play around with these for a little bit here all right you know I'm feeling pretty okay about this now so let's can uh, select all these and pre-compose and we'll call this uh, spiral comp one so now we have this pretty elongated composition full of lightning bolts and we're gonna copy this and paste it on our main composition here. And we'll actually go in here and increase the duration of this layer. I forgot to do that initially. So we'll just have to change this to about four seconds just for the sake of giving us time to work. So if we drag this layer up, you can see our lightning bolts right here throughout this composition. Uh, so what we're going to do, we'll solo this layer for now, and we're going to add a CC cylinder effect. And you can sort of see what that's starting to do. So we'll uh, bring up the radius, we'll scale this down a bit so you can see what we have. So yeah, now that's created this general sort of spiral of lightning. And because we put those lightning bolts uh, in the exact same uh, starting point, so to say, in the Y position, uh, the ray looks pretty much as a consistent lightning spiral throughout the entire uh, cylinder here. So let's unsolo that and we'll get rid of the beam particles and the shock wave uh, just so we can render a little bit faster. And we'll play around with the rotation of this spiral until we find something. So as you can see right now, uh, the more that we rotate this uh, layer of cylinder lightning, uh, you see it only exists within the realm of the pre-comp. Uh, and we can't really put this in a pre-comp to change it because then we would not be able to freely rotate this uh, spiral in 3D space. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to bring the scale of this layer back up just to 100. And we're going to push the spiral back in Z space. So just something like that. And now we can rotate the spiral freely without having to worry about uh, the confines of the precomp. So we'll play around with the radius of this perhaps, as well as the position. And we'll just keep rotating this and playing around with it until we find a position where it sits just nice on our uh, ray. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. So as you can see right now, uh, there's some odd shading going on in the lightning here, and it also exists in front of the beam when it should be spiraling behind it, such as right here. So the way we're gonna fix that is we're gonna go into the shading area here, and we're gonna turn up the ambient all the way just so we wind up with this perfect white beam. And for safety's sake, we'll also change the transfer mode of the layer from normal to screen. And we'll move that below our color grade. So next we're gonna make this lightning really start to pop. So we'll solo the layer and we will add a glow effect. Bump up the radius, add another one, bump up the radius more and another one and really bring up the radius there play with the threshold on these a little bit 
and we'll add a color vibrance effect also from video copilot which you can find in the description below and we'll change the color of that to sort of that reddish orange that we have going on maybe we'll add another glow after that turn up the threshold bump up the radius So now we're really starting to get somewhere with the spiral. Uh, but as you can see, it just sort of sits there right now and looks super awkward. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the beginning of the layer here and we will set a keyframe on the rotation Y of this cylinder. And we'll go to the end of the composition here and we'll just change this to maybe seven times 28 degrees and that doesn't look like it did anything initially but if you scrub through the layer now the cylinder rotates so it sort of gives the illusion that the spiral is uh, moving along the beam rather quickly here and we'll probably play around with the rotation settings of this just a little bit as we go along here all right so i'm feeling pretty good about the speed that it's going at right now uh, so next we need to clean this up a little bit because it just sort of appears when the beam starts and it also uh, just sort of materializes in front of Godzilla's face right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just close all these layer tabs right here. and We're going to copy all the glows and color vibrance for now and we'll delete those. And we're going to pre-compose this layer again, move all attributes into the new composition change the blend mode to screen and we'll paste all of those effects again and the reason that we did that is because we need to disable all these for now and we are going to draw a mask around the spiral here and we'll just make this an add it's hit mask quickly go to that point of the ray and then add all of that back in and we'll change this mask to sort of mesh around Godzilla's mouth there that looks good and we're gonna feather this out a little bit I think something 45 pixels maybe so what this does is it allows all the effects to glow outside of the mask because if we uh, had all these glow effects in the original with the mask as we see here uh, then the mask would just sort of awkwardly chop off those glows which would not look very good at all so we'll just keep those on this layer here next what I want to do is add a pixel motion blur effect and we'll put this above all of the other layers for now so this sort of adds some artificial motion blur to the spiral as it moves along so it looks a little less crisp so to say and we can play around with the uh, shutter angle a little bit if depending on how crisp we want it 94 that looks pretty good we'll also add a vector blur below all of these we'll play around with the settings on that perhaps we'll change the perpendicular we keep it as natural. Let's turn up the resolution so we can better see what we have. So actually let's duplicate the spiral comp layer and we'll delete the vector blur off that bottom one. And on this top one here, uh, let's play around with the vector blur as much as we want. So let's just go nuts here, so to say. And, uh, we can actually bring that into the negatives so that this sort of little highlight crushing pattern is brought outward a little bit and maybe we'll change the blur type to constant length and maybe we'll add a radial fast blur to this as well we'll position the center of it right about there we'll increase the amount maybe change the zoom to brightest and see how that looks so that's with and without that that's looking pretty good uh, but another problem actually the pixel motion blur disables masks, so the beam is still sort of just stuck there. So we're going to copy that pixel motion blur, delete it off of both of these, go back into that pre-comp and just apply it there. And we're going to have to pre-compose 
this layer inside of that composition and then apply the pixel motion blur. So now if we go back to our main comp, we have all those effects and retain the mask properties. So now let's take another look at what we've got. All right, looking pretty good, I would say. So if we add all the other layers, you can see what we've got going now. So next we're gonna start getting into the lighting of this beam and I'll just sort of speed through this once again because you've seen me do this countless times and once again you can refer back to my original tutorial about Godzilla's Atomic Breath or even Shin Godzilla's Atomic Breath to get the idea of what's going on here. So we'll just speed through all this real quick. So that about wraps up this tutorial. Uh, obviously there are things you know I don't cover in these just because they're things that I cover in other tutorials, uh, like all the stock footage fire and debris and the light and all that. But I hope that uh, this does help you out if you want to create a spiral ray effect. And uh, the same methods used to make this spiral are useful for all sorts of beams, like such as uh, you know specium rays that have a sort of spiral effect, or you know even just some gunshot effects that look cool. All sorts of stuff you can do with this, but I hope this helped out a little bit. And that about does it for this uh, Kaiju VFX tutorial. Remember to leave your requests for FX that you would like to see in the comments down below. Uh, we have lots of good stuff coming up. We have Gigant's Eye Beam, we have Beam Battle, we have a Gamera Mana Beam, all sorts of neat stuff. But if you have anything else you want to see, let me know and I'll get around to it as much as I can. So I'll see you guys next time for whatever it is that I have to offer.